Welcome to Sisters Conversations Podcast with your hostess, Latrice Carter. We feature interviews in literary, film, and television, as well as real topics that impact the black community. Welcome to Sisters Conversations. On today's show, our entertainment segment on Sisters Conversation with myself and my co-host, Selena Haskins. We are going to dive into our television and theater reviews. Today, we're going to talk about what's, you know, some of the um, trending shows, what's what we like, what we didn't dislike and give, you know, and give our thumbs up and thumbs or thumbs down. So without further ado, welcome to the show, my co-host, Selena Haskins. Hello, hey, girl. everybody. Hey, hi, Latrice. Thanks for hooking up with me on a Saturday. Yes, yes, yes. We are going to dive into a couple of, um, you know, some hot trending um, film and television hits that um, have been happening this over this last uh, month or so. Glad oh, to be yeah. glad to have you back, girl. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's been a minute. It's been so busy, but the children are getting ready to go on spring break. So hopefully that'll give me more free time to hurry up and get a couple of more of these recordings in before they're back in. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. That's what I'm talking about. That is exactly what I'm talking about. Okay. So uh, last weekend was a big weekend for coming to, um, coming to, coming to America too. Okay. Yeah. So uh let's let's just dive right into this um and I'll and, and I'll let you start what did you like about this is a sequel to the first one and I'm always nervous when they do a sequel to a really good uh I mean really really good movie you know that's been 10 15 years you know um be prior you know um yeah. so what are your thoughts um what did you like what did you didn't like and uh, what are your, you know, if you give us a thumbs up, thumbs up or thumbs down? <laughs> well, when I saw the previews for Coming to America, I didn't think it was going to be good, to be honest. Mm-hmm. But I was wrong. I thought it was pretty, I thought it was a pretty good family movie. It was mm-hmm. quite refreshing to see, you know, so much comedic talent in a movie and surprisingly, no profanity like that. Mm-hmm. So that was quite different from part one. Um, so I tip my hat to Eddie for giving so many uh, uh, comedians their flowers while they're still here. So, yes. you know, much respect to him for that. And kudos to Jermaine Fowler, who plays his son, who plays Hakeem's son, because he's from my hometown, Washington, D.C. <laughs> and he went to Northwestern High School out in Maryland. But I think he did a good job. So I had to shout him out right quick. Um, but I thought the movie was funny in parts it had a good storyline it was a little slow around the middle but it picked back up towards the end so I would say I would have liked to see this sequel um earlier <laughs> like this is like a 30 years later kind of thing mm-hmm. but they did pull it off I think and so for that I give them the thumbs up okay okay now you know when I first heard that they were going to um do the sequel to this movie I was I was against it I was like come on now there's just (laughs) some things you just gotta leave alone you know this this was really you know I'm like you know the first one was awesome you know and I I was I I was on the edge you know I was like oh my god how is it gonna be you know are they gonna mess it up you know (laughs) because I've seen some sequels that I'm like you should have just left it alone but right. I was surprised. I was surprised when I, um, for this one, when it came out um, last week, um, it was good. Um, for me, I did like the acting. Um, you know how you sit and you were like, I don't remember her from the first one. You know, I, I had that because I didn't remember Leslie from the first one. You know, I was like, really? You was in the first one? I don't remember that. So, you know, it, make you wanna, it made me go back to watch the first one too. But, but for the most part, I liked it. Um, I, it, it did, the storyline did, it, the storyline was good. There was a little bit where um, by midway through, I kind of figured it out the plot. I was like, 
oh, okay, I, I, I can see that. The way, the way it ended, I was like, uh-huh. It was kind of like, okay, so you did the same thing your daddy did. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, you, you, mm-hmm. you, she wasn't an American girl. She was an African girl. You found your love, you know, but you know, your barbers, beautiful acting, you know, I, um, those two. And, but it was just that I was like, that was my only part that I was like, I figured it out midway through the story because it kind of like fell, it kind of like fell, fell, fell into your lap if you're really paying attention. And, right. um, but I, I do give it a thumbs up. Um, like I said, I was really nervous, um, for this sequel. Cause I was like, come on, this is a mad, this, you know, the first one was a masterpiece, you know, that's a classic, that's a cult classic right there. Yeah. Yeah. It was a classic. You know all the words in it. <laughs> yes. You knew they was going to say their line before they even said their line. Okay. That's how many times right. you watched the first one, but I, I did enjoy it. And, and like you said, it was very family oriented. I sat and we watched it with my daughter. So, um, and you know, and, and you said that there was no cussing. I didn't even, you know, I didn't even realize that there were no cussing like they did in the first one. Oh yeah. That was back in the day too. Look. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> what, 89 or 80? Yes. Something yes. Like yeah. I was like, oh, wow. Just, th- just thinking it back on it. Like, oh, wow. Yeah, you're right. They didn't do and a so lot. many co- comedians in it too. Yes, so and, and that was nice. Out. That was nice. It was that was hilarious to see, um, to, to see all the comedians in it. Tracy Morgan, Leslie, um, oh my God, um, Linnell. Uh, yeah, Linnell, Linnell, and I was and, and I was sitting there going, okay. And a couple, it was a couple of the other guy. I can't think of his name. Um, the other comedian that was with, um, there were the uncles sitting at the table. I can't think of the actor's name, but he's a comedian as well. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, I will have to probably see his face. Yeah, yeah. So that was good. So I do give it, you know, coming to America, thumbs up. Um, but but next time, not waiting thirty years to bring us, you know, a sequel. <laughs> you know, <laughs> right. But but they did good. They did good. And Eddie Murphy is receiving um the NW. He's being um for the, the NWCP, he's getting inducted to the Hall of Fame. So congratulations to him on that. Um long overdue, I think, you know. Um, is it to the NAACP's Hall of Fame? Yes. Or just a separate Hall of Fame for like comedians or something? Um, I was reading an article on um um online i can tell you in a second who i because i just shared it um he's um here it is black enterprise magazine um posted that um he is getting the i'm gonna go to it and tell you real quick eddie murphy to be inducted into the naacp image awards hall of fame Oh, wonderful. Yeah, that's a that, that's a very nice um that's a very nice um accolade, you know, uh, especially coming from your own people. I think that's um that's going to be very exciting. Yes. Yeah. Congrats to Eddie Murphy. Yay. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> now, um a couple of weeks back, we also watched um Billy versus the US. Now, yes. that Oh my God. And the, the beautiful actress that played her, um, I kept, when I first saw it, I was like, who is this woman? And it hit me, Audrey Day. Oh my goodness. This, oh my God. I learned so much about Billy (laughs) Holiday, Billy Holiday that day watching that movie. Cause I've watched other Billy Holiday movies, but this one was really good, especially given the fact that she was um an advocate she, she was an activist um and, and and she used her music um and they it was it was heartening to see that the the federal government tried their best um and they did try to her, shut her up like okay. i i was i, I was uh, it, that made me angry but i know it was a different you know we're, we're in different times but that part of that of, of you know her life made me angry that they went out of their way to to incriminate her, 
you know, yeah. to shut her, try to set her music down, to try to shut her up, um, even to the point where how you handcuff her on her dying bed. Yeah. I, I, that movie was a thumbs up. And I really, I want everyone to, you know, to really um, learn more about those who were activists standing up for fighting for our rights, um, right. voicing their opinion. Um, she was a very talented, um, a very talented woman. Every, I think every, um, every film that is done by her, I think we're learning more and more about who she was and what right. she stood for. So um, kudos, hats off to the director um, and writers for this particular um, um, film, Billy versus the U.S. Um, it's definitely a thumbs up, definitely one um, those should see and kudos to Audrey Day um, for this role and the other actors as well. Um, right along with you. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think that one of the things that I learned that had me intrigued was that background of it, as you touched on about how the federal government was involved with contributing to her drug addiction. And starting her out on it. I think it was someone on the road, actually, that introduced her to, to drugs. But mm -hmm. I like how Lee Daniels was able to, who directed it, how he was able to actually show a different point of view of Billie Holiday. Mm -hmm. um, like you said, the more movies that come out, it seems like there's an additional layer to her life. And I know that this was kind of based on a book as well. Um, the title, I don't know offhand, but um, a colleague of mine at work was talking about it. And he said that during that whole time period with jazz musicians, mm -hmm. that the federal government always kind of targeted them because they didn't want them to succeed in any way with anything. Because you have to still keep in mind that time period. Um, they just didn't want to see Black people succeed. And, you know, it was really, you know, people associate Billie Holiday unfairly, mm -hmm. I feel. Um, like, her life equates drugs. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really unfair because <clears throat> she was a very talented woman very talented and she just had a troubled background mm -hmm. um i don't know how i would be if i came from the type of background that billy came from while they didn't touch on it a whole lot you know you saw some um flashbacks of her childhood in the movie mm -hmm. like, what mother prostitutes her child you right. know what i mean <laughs> you know that's so scarring like my son is 13 and I think Billy was 14 mm -hmm. so imagine that I, I can't you know okay, so right. and for me I had you know really a deep sympathy for her based on the background that she came from it's not that I you know condone the drug use or like trying to minimize that but I don't Understanding her background, I could see why she would go down that road. I mean, mm -hmm. if, if you look at what she was brought up in, the same for other entertainers like Richard Pryor, who grew up in a brothel. Like Billie Holiday had the same life. Like she's just like almost a female version of him, except she became a blues singer and he became a comedian, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. so, just because you become famous, that doesn't mean that you don't still carry those scars with you. Absolutely. And I felt that, you know, um, the acting was brilliant. I think Andre Day, she did such a remarkable job at playing Billie Holiday, even down to her voice. If you listen to some of Billie yes. Holiday's interviews, she nails it. And now, if I were to go back and watch Lady Sings the Blues, and not to discredit um, Diana Ross, who's a legend, mm -hmm. 
not to discredit her in any way, I thought she did fabulous too, and especially for that particular time in which she did the movie. Mm-hmm. But now that I've seen someone else portray Billie Holiday, um, Andre Day, I can't unsee it now. If that, <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Like, I can't see anybody else <laughs> like playing another Billie Holiday. That's how phenomenal she was. And uh, it, there was just a lot of great acting just all throughout the movie. It was. Made it pop and come to life. And what was the gentleman who played Jimmy Fletcher? Uh, Tarante Rhodes. Oh, he was brilliant. The detective that was following her around. Mm-hmm. The yeah, I didn't her. like him. He made me mad. <laughs> I, 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 he made me mad because I felt like, I'm like, come on, bro. This is, you're you're setting her up. And yeah. he fell in love with her. He did. He fell in love with her. And it was like, wow, you set her up. <laughs> and, and, and it's, and you know, it, the sad part about this is that um, they did that back in that time that, you know, that era. And mm-hmm. um, that leads me right into um, um, Black Judas um, with Fred Hampton. Um and- that movie, the same thing. Um, one of our own, one of our very own set him up. Yeah. Worked with the FBI. The the hatred that Fred Hampton was doing, um uh, what he did for the city of Chicago. Mm-hmm. He was helping his own community, and the FBI did not like that. They were in that movie. They were so racist. I saw racism, racism at a whole nother level. Um, that and how they killed this man was just—it was heartbreaking. You know, one of our own drugged him, so he was he was unconscious. He was asleep. He was completely knocked out, and they still shot him the way they did. They shot him so many times. He was—he wasn't moving. He was asleep and I was so, you know, as I, as the movie went on and and when it ended, um, the civil suit that took 15 years to settle was just heart disheartening that the federal government went out of their way to break black people down, to try to keep black people in poverty pretty much. I yeah. remember the documentary of that too. So mm-hmm. I can visualize, I know you saw the movie and I saw like, have you seen the clips of the actual apartment when they shot it up when he was asleep? It was nothing but holes. Yes, they, I saw apartment. the, um, you know, at the end, they showed the actual scene. They, you know, they showed the, you know, the real scene and it's just disheartening. It's just me and my daughter were sitting there. Our mouths were dropped. We were like, that is so sad. That it is. All, all he was doing was he was feeding, he was feeding kids, the community. He was feeding his community, providing for his community, uniting a community. There were, you know, it wasn't just black people. It was black, white, Hispanics, you know, the black and brown. He united a city, and, you know, you know, Chicago is known, you know, you know, there's like a joke. They like, you know, Chicago's run by the mob, you know, it's like, wow. You know, looking at, it was not just the mob, the FBI, they adamantly did not want him or Huey Newton, and any of those, anyone to help the black people, black people, educating black people, telling them the truth, you know, knowledge is power you know, um, education, you know, he, you know, he was about building in his community, uplifting and supporting his community. Um, and they literally, they murdered him. It, that was an execution. It was, I mean, they treated him as if he had been a serial killer or something. Yes. And that's how J. Edgar Hoover, who was the director of the FBI at that time, Mm-hmm. He has so many conspiracies attached to his name. And I don't care what anyone says, how he was a great FBI agent. He always thought that 
black people were conspiring against the government you know Mm -hmm. as soon as you spoke out against the injustices of a broken system he thought you were trying to attack the government Mm -hmm. so he looked at um organizations that were formed by african americans as an attack Mm -hmm. on federal agencies when it wasn't an attack on federal agencies our people were demonstrating their first amendment rights that's right which is supposed to be freedom Mm -hmm. and fairness Mm -hmm. all the things that we were not getting Mm -hmm. so like, like you said like you said they were educating people they were educating people and they were also um advocating their fifth amendment rights the right to bear arms mm-hmm. they had a problem with that hoover really couldn't stand that yes he do he sure <laughs> couldn't because they protected they protected their community crime mm-hmm. they they handled the crime in their in their own neighborhoods you know crime right. was low yeah. you know they fed their community. No kid went hungry. No family went hungry or without. Right. And right. Sorry, that was the Second Amendment. Look, I get in trouble for that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. You know, it was like they refused to allow Black people to progress, to unite, to um, to organize and, and be, you know, and, and come out of poverty. They w- it was like, they wanted to keep us down at a certain level. Right. And yeah. you can't keep a people down. Look, I'm just going to say this. You can't keep a people down for too long before they wake up and rise. We always rise. And that's, and, and that seems to be the problem for some, they, you know, Every they they come at us and they hit us with so much and we get up every time we get up we keep getting up and they keep sitting there scratching their heads we done done this 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 and that and they continue to get up they continue to rise they continue to educate they continue to excel at what they do you can't keep a people down you know exactly. so I strongly 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 recommend um families sit down and watch this movie i know some people be like i'm tired of watching those type of movies this this is you you need to know your past exactly so that you can understand your present and be able to be and be able to have a powerful impact for the future you need to be a child you you know you need to be a part of the future and i totally agree isn't it ironic how you said you were just saying our people continue to rise up and that Andre Day Andre Day song is called I'll Rise Up yes. I just thought that was ironic just now um, and empowering you know because you know you just got to see the movie don't you know sometimes people have a stereotypical viewpoint mm-hmm when it comes to movies that are based on celebrities who have passed away, they're like, oh, this is going to be your quintessential movie about an African-American who got hooked on drugs and they, and they died. Like what else is new? Okay. And I think that, you know, that's not a good viewpoint. That's not the only thing about people's lives because, you know, you can take any, earthly leader and pick out flaws that's right even from biblical times okay Mm -hmm. any human being on earth before us and even now they are not perfect that's right but you can't minimize the good that they've done in their lives and so many people in interviews and and footage of billy holiday as well as in footage of Fred Hampton, they will tell you how kind they were, how giving they were. Billy loved dogs. So mm-hmm. that alone kind of shows you a little softness towards her personality. Yeah, yep. she could be a wild child. 
We get all of that. But that also shows a tender side to her. And she wanted to have children. Mm -hmm. She had a god child who she adored. Her godson spoke in an interview about how wonderfully she cared for him. She loved him like she gave birth to him. So, you know, that shows a side to her as a woman. You know, if you Mm -hmm. are not a childbearing woman, maybe for health reason or what have you, that doesn't mean that, you know, they're not compassionate. You know what I mean? That they don't love or have a heart. They do. And sometimes bigger than those of us who have had the blessing of bearing children. So those are sides to Billy that, you know, encompasses the whole scope of who she was as a person mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it's a must watch y'all gotta watch it y'all gotta watch these two movies billy versus the u.s and uh, black judas of uh, the fred hampton story you have to watch these um we give these a thumbs up um yeah. and, and hats off to the directors and all the actors and supporting actors um these these are well worth a sit down and watch with your family yes please do (laughs) absolutely now you know television you know they you know i feel like you know um television since we've all been in shelter in place you know uh, there's been a lot of there there have been some hits and there's been some misses okay (laughs) and uh one of the biggest hits that i i'm so happy is back um queen sugar series I'm so happy Queen Sugar is back on air. Um, I absolutely love Ava DuVernay um, for her ability to continue to bring the writing, the uh, writing with new writers, um, new directors, women directors. She's so adamant about giving that exposure, giving those opportunities, and you can see it in the writing. And one of the things that I love how they kicked off this new season of Queen Sugar is that they are, um, they've they captured in what's happening in the world mm-hmm. um, into the storyline. And that says a whole lot. Um, so we're watching how these characters um unfold you know how they struggle with covid how they deal with covid the isolation um you know i absolutely love charlie um just watch seeing the growth of charlie seeing the 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 struggles charlie's had to deal with but also watching nova and 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 you know i everybody loves that that beautiful chocolate brother <laughs> you mean white chocolate calvin (laughs) (laughs) you know um just his there it's phenomenal acting it's phenomenal writing it's amazing directing um it's and if you haven't started watching queen sugar you need to watch it but i I strongly suggest you go back to season one because you know you just can't jump in at, at season five no, you need to go back to one through four and catch up first, you know. So you I see the growth. Huh? I started binge watching during this whole quarantine thing, uh pandemic. Mm-hmm. I, guess I went back to season one myself. So, like Latrice said, go back from the beginning and then bring yourselves up to speed. It's a great show. Yes, um, because if you jump in at, at where we are now, you're gonna be a little confused about how they got there you know you have to see the journey it's an amazing show and my hat like I said hats off to Ava DuVernay and the amazing writers and directors that she's assigned to each to each um um, episode um definitely a thumbs up it's definitely one to keep watching um Selena your thoughts I love I'm in totally agreement with you um I like as well how Ava always stays current to our times and what's going on in the world so you are absolutely right Latrice I love that about her work um 
I love how now, since she has included what's happening in the world today, I love how the family has to be separated because Mm -hmm. we're so used to kind of seeing them in each other's sort of in each other's business. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, But now that they have to stay um, socially distant um, from each other, it's interesting to see the dynamics of their relationships within their own households. Like Aunt Vi in Hollywood, whom I love, Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, you know, they face a challenge where he has to leave to go care for his mom. I'm going to leave like that. Um, Charlie and Micah. Yep. How they're at a mom and son tug of war, so to speak. And he, as he, you know, he's trying to become a man and she Mm -hmm. still sees him as a boy. Yep. And uh, (laughs) I can relate to that too. Um, And that you was just talking about Nova and her boo thing. (laughs) Yeah. Calvin, I adore them. Um, I've been waiting for them to get back together. So, while I don't agree with how they got together, I am glad that, you know, they recognized that how they got together, okay, may, they shouldn't have went about it that way, but there's love in their hearts for each other, genuine love in their hearts. And I think that as this season moves along, they'll face more challenges, you know, as a as a um, biracial couple, um, interracial couple, I mean, and you know, I'm looking forward to seeing more as to what's going to happen to this family. Um, what's their last name? I was trying to... Borderlines. The Borderlines. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. The Borderlines. I'm looking forward to see what's going to happen with them this season. So, like Latrice, thumbs up to Queen Sugar. And you know what? We can't forget that, you know, the other two, the baby boy, um, um, Ralph Angel. Oh yeah. And yes. Yes. Ralph Angel. You 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 um you're um you we're this season we're gonna see that beautiful bond. You know, he proposed to his boo. Um oh, yeah. <laughs> and I'm just like, okay, okay. We're gonna see that grow this season. I I see that now, you know. And it's kind of nice that, you know, the way they're the way the writers have depicts um displayed it where you know now we're going to see how each family each um each family member cope with COVID um, yes and the whole situation and how they deal with situations and issues in their household um so you guys make sure you tune in every week so that you can check out Queen Sugar if you haven't already um and then you know uh Selena and I have we 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 were talking about a couple a couple of new shows that came out this year um right after the Super Bowl is The Equalizer and that stars my favorite Queen Latifah you know hey. um yes I love her I'm so happy to see her back to acting again because you yeah. know the last show that she was in was um Star on Fox and um i hate that they didn't renew that um they did i think it was two seasons that they did that they did um and i know uh she was i loved her on that but i'm i'm seeing her in a different role the um is is you know seeing her act more as a detective this is it's different it's definitely it's definitely different but i'm i'm liking I'm liking where it's going and it just got renewed for season two. So I'm really curious to see how they're going to grow her in this role um, in season two as well. So it's going to be nice. Um, This, this kind of kicked off from the movie, the equalizer. Um, And we were all shocked that it was that they decided to make the equalizer a woman instead of you know Denzel you know because that's when I first heard about it I was like oh Denzel's gonna make this some you know he's gonna oh be on a television series I was oh this gonna be real good you know (laughs) and they flipped it and she got the role as the equalizer and I'm like okay put the woman okay don't worry all right let's see let's see what the queen gonna do you know so so far it's been good um 
I'm just waiting for it, it to pick up, you know, um, yeah. she, she used to be a, uh, um, she, she used to be a part of the secret service. So she's done a lot. And, um, what I love about it that, um, she's having to find balance because she's a mother uh, and be a part of she has a teenager. So trying to find balance and still do what she loves. And, you know, she's helping people, um, who can't get the, get justice, um, from the police. So it's like I said, it's going to be interesting to see how this show unfolds. It's still new. Um, so it comes back and, um, they're on hiatus, um, right now. So I guess they're, uh, filming new episodes or what have you, but, um, like I said, it's, um, just waiting to see how this show continues to unfold so far. The, um, the first couple of episodes that I've seen, they've been good. They've caught my, they caught my attention. So I'm, I, I will be reporting back you guys. Um, uh, as this season, as this first season unfolds, um, I'm as, proud of her too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm proud of her too. This is actually, her show is actually based on the 1985 version of the Equalizer where Edward Woodard okay. was the, um, was the star at that particular time. Uh, my mom and I used to watch it <laughs> Okay, okay, <laughs> every night. But you're right, Latrice, in that, you know, this is a great spin on it, especially in the times that we're living in where women are giving more opportunities. African-American women mm-hmm. are giving more opportunities in Hollywood. So I didn't see it. I did see it. I saw the episode one, mm-hmm. but I tip my hat to clean my teeth and, and, I didn't know they renewed for season two, Latrice. So yeah, that she announced it. Um, she tweeted it. Uh, I think a day or so ago, and I retweeted it. And I was like, "All right, now I'm looking forward to season two. I'm, I'm glad CBS renewed them for season two. Yeah, that's awesome. Kudos that's to Queen Latifah. <laughs> yes, and then just recently, this week on the OWN Network. Uh, there's a new show called Delilah. Now I haven't, I saw the preview to it. It has my girl, Tony. Well, that's not her, her real name. Y'all. She was on girlfriend. <laughs> um, <laughs> she's still to- hey, look, don't feel bad. Latrice. She's still Tony to me too. That's how well she played the character. <laughs> yeah. That's how well she played that character. When you, you know, you see her, you go, Oh my God, there go Tony. Um, She is in this new series on the own network called Delilah. And um, I have, I'm going to, I'm going to catch up and watch it this week, but Selena has watched it. So Selena, tell us what you like and what you don't like about it. Well, first props to Craig Wright, because he was given a green light to create another show. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know who he is, He's also the force behind Greenleaf. Yes. Which I miss. And I I love Greenleaf. Oh, bring it back. Bring it back. Okay. Uh, (laughs) We digress. (laughs) Delilah. Delilah is a good storyline. The writing, you know, hands down is great. Um, But I felt like the level of mystery and suspense it's not strong enough to kind of move it along Mm -hmm. i think if it were a book i would keep reading it but for television um from a visual standpoint it kind of i kind of struggled to get through it um i wanted to like it because of greenleaf and craig wright's work i think that the actors are all talented are all beautiful but when i'm watching it I can't help but wonder if the roles were reversed, would it move along differently? Like, there's a young lady who came to Delilah for a job who seems to me like she should be the attorney more so than Delilah, you know, playing that, playing that particular character. Because the um, lady who plays Delilah, 
just my opinion, she kind of comes across as more of a school teacher or like a character kind of a role. Whereas the other young lady seems like she could be more of the attorney. So I think maybe, you know, she should have been like the friend <laughs> working <laughs> or the friend working for the corporation that got fired and now is hiring the lawyer. So some of the characters there, if they're reversed, maybe I would feel a little bit different. Um, but give it a chance. In fairness, give it a chance. Um, I'm not going to give it a thumbs up or down. I would just say, formulate your own opinion, but try to give it a chance. I mean, maybe it'll get better the more it goes along. Because mm -hmm. honestly, when I first started watching um, Greenleaf, um, it took a little minute, maybe like by the second or third episode, I was into it. And so maybe that's just how this may be, you know? So give it a chance. <laughs> okay okay and you know and and that's what we have to do you know and, and, and is i'm glad you mentioned greenleaf so like when greenleaf first came um first came on scene i mm -hmm. you know the first time i saw it i was like okay we're doing the church thing okay right <laughs> you know but <laughs> you know you you in the back of your mind you're like oh okay we're gonna yeah okay it, it you know the pastor sleeping with who or, you know, that was the, the mindset I had, but I, I, you know, the first, the, by the second episode, I was like, I was hooked. I was like, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it unfolded. It, you know, you, you have to like watch, you know, at least watch the first three episodes before you can really see where the show is going to take off. You know, right. so as far as like, if you're going, if this is going to be something you're going to get into, because you're able to see the, the, uh, the plot, you know, okay, 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 I see where y'all going. And then you, then you get blindsided because, you know, Greenleaf, I, I was so sad the way it ended. It, it had like a couple plots, you know, a yes. couple um, shockers, you know, Bishop died. Um, the young man, um, it, the the Grace left. The young man, that's her son. I had I, I in my mind, I formed opinion of the the young man that died or got killed by the police. He was her son and not him, and that he stole his identity. Girl, I, I was over here formulating my own. You know, like mm, cause because the way they kept doing the flashbacks, how that right. young man's spirit was hunting him, and I'm like. Oh, we you stole his identity. That the, her son is really dead, and you done took his identity, girl. I was all over the place. That's what I thought too, and I, it is still kind of a little bit of a loophole there for me. Mm -hmm. Like it's no real closure. Yeah. So I'm, I'm hoping that bring Greenleaf back. <laughs> yeah, because they because they kind of left us hanging. You know, I was yeah. like, really? Y'all yeah. just gonna leave it like that? Yeah. Come on now. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute, y'all can't do this, right, <laughs> girl? Yeah, it was just too many. It was just, and you know, I ordered. I, I was like, okay, this. I'm like, y'all could have like gave closure to you know to to each of the different children with their situations. You know, um, yes, Grace left. She was driving off. She left. Um, right for to take on a new opportunity um and her son he um I, he 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 was going somewhere to live with his dad and i'm like that should have there, there was a ghost hunting him and i really i really needed a little bit more um a little bit more on that like to tell the truth because i i really think that the young man that got killed by the police was her son and not him and he stole his identity that they were in prison together and he stole you know stole his identity um, I do too. I really do. And um uh Cher Sherry, she's a cherry, cherry, the other the baby girl. Uh, uh, uh charity. Charity, yes, I called her cherry girl. Cherry, yes, charity, her and that other guy that he, you know, he was gonna marry the 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 uh that whole scandal thing with the um, them taking over their church and buying right. up all this land. I wanted to see how that 
I wanted to see that get exposed. I mean, I mean, yeah, it got exposed, but I really wanted to see what was going to happen between those two. You know, it just right. like fell off. Right. Like I wanted the cherry to come out winning something. Like Grace yeah. can't always be the winner. Right. Right. So I was just like, I kind of wanted to see each, um, you know, and then Jacob and his wife were getting a divorce because, you know, she let, she girls slept around, right. <laughs> had an affair and caught something. <laughs> that was the part that was crazy. I felt like he should have been the one that caught something. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was like, but two walls don't wake up right. So, yep, yep. So I was like, man. Oh, but it would be nice to see Greenleaf come back for another season. But we know they said that was the last of it, you know. But stuff yeah. like that, you know, you you have to give us show a, a a chance. But you know, these are our thoughts and our views. You know, as 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 um as um watchers, you know, we are you know we're the ones you know we are the audience so and we're just sharing our feedback and our thoughts about shows that we've watched shows that we think you guys may like as well and um share your thoughts and opinions you know drop a comment in the um under the podcast and let us know what you thought of coming to America and and, and if you've watched Billy versus the US um and if you watched Delilah um, and if you're a Queen Sugar fan, uh, the Equalizer fan, and then you definitely, definitely the Black Judas, the uh, Fred Hampton story. Let us know your thoughts. Um, Selena, any closing remarks? Now is the time to actually, you know, I know we're all still busy, even though we're at home. But if you do have time, now is a good opportunity to give these new shows a try. I agree with Latrice. Um, Give them a chance. If you haven't seen it from the beginning, go back and, you know, Netflix offers Greenleaf, for example, from the beginning. Um, And also you can check on Google Movies. They offer a lot of seasons from the beginning as well. And there are going to be more shows to come. So um, we look forward to sharing our thoughts and opinions. And like Latrice said, we'd love to hear from you guys. You can tweet us. You can reach out to us on social media too. So give us a holla. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is our show today. We are um, going to um, give you guys back your day. Don't forget, um, tune in to Sisters Conversations. We have a weekly podcast. Um, we have different segments. We have our um, each week, um, first Thursdays, we have Real Talk. Um, that's a nice discussion panel of ladies. We have a we pick a topic and we we have a, a real conversation. And then second Thursdays is our entertainment segment, which is comprised of author spotlight interviews, book reviews, television and film theater, and um, t- yeah, television, film and theater. And then we also do actor actors and director interviews under our entertainment segment as well as third Thursdays of the month is our mental health and physical health segment. And fourth Thursdays of the month, we um, dive right into wealth and estate planning, um, building your wealth, um, whereas it's in um, real estate, um, stock investments, money management, um we have our in-house experts and special guests that actually join the show and we give you nice informative information because we want to have a um impact in the black community we don't just want to entertain you all we want to be able to have an impact and be a resource of information for our community so until next time we are signing off you guys stay safe and stay blessed have a great day Have a great weekend, guys, and a great day. All righty. Thanks to our special guests for joining the show today. Be sure to follow us on your favorite streaming channel so you don't miss a show. We can be heard on Spotify, Apple, iHeartRadio, Spreaker, and YouTube at Sista's Place. Visit our website, www.sistasplace.com, to learn more about us.